Section 2.3 Homework Problem Number 3 Using the fractions 2 thirds and 3 fourths, describe how to give two fractions common denominators. And this is something we often do in algebra class. And when we try to compare two fractions to see which one is bigger, and we need to have the common denominator to compare. And we also, when we add two fractions or subtract, we have to have a common denominator to add or subtract. And uh, so first we need to describe uh, how to do that. And secondly, uh, what are you doing when you give fractions common denominators? Second question. The third question, what stays the same? And the fourth question, what changes? So we need to address uh, all these four questions. So uh, I'm going to use 2 thirds and uh, 3 fifths as an example. So first of all, let's answer the first part. So how do we give these two fractions um, a common denominator? So notice that currently we have two different denominators. One is 3, the other is 5. They're different. So this is how what you are, uh, we are thinking. So we need to uh, use a common multiple of these two numbers. So what we mean by common multiple, so you start with a number 3 and a 5. You want to multiply both of them by some kind of number. They don't have to be the same. They can actually they have to be different. So you end up with a common number. So of course, one of the easiest ways is to always multiply the other number, right? So we can multiply 3 by 5, multiply 5 by 3, and notice 3 times 5 and 5 times 3, you always end up with the same number. Okay, sometimes you may have a smaller number instead of multiply the other one, you could multiply the different numbers to end up with the same. This is called uh, least common, a uh, uh, common multiple. And in this case, actually, it's also the smallest you can find. Okay, so this is how you do it. So we use a common multiple of two numbers. So for each fraction, we multiply both uh, numerator and denominator by a factor that will change the denominator to this common multiple. So I already have them here. So for the first denominator, 3, I have to multiply by 5. For the second denominator, 5, I have to multiply by 3. So first, you focus on the denominators. You don't really, at this point, in the first step, we don't really care about the numerators. OK, so um, we again, here we have 2 thirds and focus on the denominator 3. And from well, this chart right here, we need to multiply 3 by 5. So let's go ahead and multiply the bottom by 5. And then, uh, correspondingly, we also have to multiply the numerator by 5. So from the first homework example, we already know if you multiply both top numerator and denominator by the same number, you always end up with the same fraction or equivalent fraction. But if you only multiply the bottom by 5 uh, without doing the same to the top, you're not going to get the equivalent fraction. OK, all right, so notice that from the drawing, you can see when you divide each part into five equal parts, uh, not only the total share four is turning into 20, um, but also the your share, uh, the three parts will also be turning into 15. It's not going to stay as three parts, three bigger parts. So all of them going to be turned into both top and bottom numbers will be will changed. OK, so uh, we're also going to multiply the top number by five. Now, for the second fraction with the denominator 5, notice that we have to multiply it by 3 in order to get the same number, end up with the same number 15. So we multiply the bottom by 3. And correspondingly, we must multiply the top by 3. So again, um, the bottom represents the whole cake. The top is your share. Um, both of them will be um, the slices, the, all the slices for the whole cake and all the slices you have for your share. And all of them going to be uh, divided uh, into smaller parts. OK, so let's now look at the drawing. And although, um, well, I guess they did say in terms of drawings. Um, so it, it, even, if though, even if they don't ask you to do drawings, it's, um, it, would be make, it would make the explanation much easier with the drawings. So we're going to start with, and now we have to do <laughs> four paper strips because, and if you remember from the first problem, because you have two different fractions, although they are equivalent, there's still two different fractions, 3 fourths and uh, 3 fourths and 15 20. So that's why you have to have two paper strips. So here, because we have two fractions, and actually four fractions, because each of them, so the first fraction, 2 thirds, is going to be turned into 10 15th. 
And the second fraction, 3 fifths, is going to be turned into 9 fifteenths. So there are uh, literally uh, four different fractions we have to uh, draw. So let's start with the first fraction, 2 thirds, which means you take the whole and divide into three equal parts. And that's the whole cake, three parts. And my share is two parts, so we shade two of them. For the second fraction, because the denominator is 5, so we're going to divide the whole cake into five equal parts, and our share is 3, so we're going to take shade 3 of them. Okay, so these are these two paper strips are the, for the original fractions. Now, let's, um, let's um, work on the other two fractions we got, the new fractions. So we multiply in both top and not, for the first fraction, we multiply both top and bottom by 5. So if you still remember from the first example we did, whenever we multiply, we, when we multiply the numerator by the same number, results in dividing or partitioning the bigger parts into smaller parts. How many smaller parts? If you multiply by 5, 5 smaller parts. Okay, so in my case, uh, the first one multiplied by 5, so I'm going to have to divide each of these two pieces, parts, this one, into five equal parts, which is uh, drawn down here. Uh, if you want to um, move this one up there, you can, so you will, so that you can compel them. So this is one, two, three, four, five equal parts. And then we're going to take the second slice, my share, divide into five equal parts. Okay, finally, this is the share for somebody else. We also have to do the same. And we divide that or partition that and this part right here into one, two, three, four, five, and the whole cake, the whole into five equal parts. So now, um, this third paper strip right here, and notice what we have, the whole cake has, uh, let's uh, see if we start the, the cut, the original cuts are here and here and here. So we have right here, so that's one five, and that's two fives, and that's three fives. So the bottom is three fives, but the shaded part only has two fives, one five, two fives. Okay, so that's the uh, fraction two times five over three times five, which is 10 over 15. Now for the final one, um, we draw another paper strip, and we're gonna start with this drawing, to get here. By the way, this one comes from that joy. So if you want to put these two together and these two together, you can. And we're gonna when we because this time we're multiplying the numerator and denominator by three, which means we're gonna partition or divide each part into three smaller smaller parts. And so let's see, we have uh, this part right here. Let's cut it into one, two, three parts, and take the second. Cut into one, two, three parts. Take the third, cut into one, two, three parts. And also, so that's our share, my share. And other people's share, two parts, also have to do the same thing. This one cut into one, two, three. And this part, one, two, three. So every slice or every part is subdivided into uh, three smaller parts. So if you multiply by five, five smaller parts. If multiply by three, three smaller parts. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of all of that. So now let's look at uh, the entire cake has the original cuts. One is here, so you have now one part is turning into three parts. One three and two threes, uh, three threes and four threes and five threes. So the whole cake is five threes. And the top, our share has the shaded part has one, three, two, three, four threes. I'm sorry, three threes. So we have three threes, which gives us nine over 15. Okay, so this part is literally doing the first one twice uh, because we have two fractions. Now, after we, so we end up with the same denominator now, 10, 15, and 9, 15, um, the same denominator we want. Okay, so now let's answer the second question. It says, in terms of the mass drawings, so you are looking at the drawings. Uh, what are you doing when you give the fractions common denominators? So originally we have um, denominators 3 and 5, but now they both of them have the same denominator 15. And when you look at the drawings, uh, look at these two. They, um, let me see, use this color. So you can see that this part is exactly the same as this part. 
See this part? Exactly the same size. Exactly the same size. And exactly the same size. Okay. So originally, you can see uh, for the fractions with the denominator 3, it's a much bigger slice than the fraction with denominator 5. See, that's a part. That's a part. But now, after we multiply the first fraction by 5 and 5 and 3 and 3, they both are turning to 15 and 15, which means they must have, each slice must have the same size. Okay, so this is what we say. In giving the fractions common denominators, we are partitioning or dividing the parts of each fraction into equivalent sized smaller parts. Okay, so the, these are language from the textbook, equivalent sized smaller parts. But if you want to use your own words like equal parts, okay, so that, that should, work, should work. The total number, uh, next, the finally, the so we answered this question. Um, graphically, you can see. They have the equal parts now, equal size parts now. Now, next question, what stays the same? So, for, um, and what changes? Looks like I answered what changes first. So what changes? You can see the total number of par pieces or parts and the size of each part um, change. So you, for example, you had one, um, we had one, two, three parts. Now it's um, 15 parts. So altogether 15, and we had five, and now we have 15. So the total number of parts change. Also, when the part, number of parts change, of course, the size will change. So originally, this is how big each part is, how big each part is, but now this is how big each part is, which is 1 15th here. That, that's 1 30. Here. Same thing for this one. 1 5th is changed into also 1 15th. Okay, so originally they have different sizes, but now they end up with the same size. Okay, so that's what changes, the number of parts and also the size of each part. Secondly, what, lastly, what stays the same? Now, uh, the, you can use this language, the amount of the unit amount, the unit amount means the whole, and that would be represented by the shaded part pieces remains the same. If this sentence confuses you, what you could do is you could just say, Okay, the shaded parts don't change. Look, um, okay, so that's the shaded part for two thirds, and that's the shaded part for its equivalent fraction ten fifth. So exact the same size. Okay. Also, the whole is the same. So if you look at the whole from here all the way to here, and actually all of these have the same holes. So the whole stays the same. So if uh, the whole cake is the same size and your share. Um, is also the same size, although they become smaller, and that your your share out of the whole cake stays the same. So you could just say the shaded parts and the whole both stay the same, so um, the fraction will stay the same. Okay, uh, you can also explain the second one. See, that's the shaded part compared to that stay the same. Also compared to the whole stay the same. Okay, so um, you can either use this language or your own language.